Many college students don't utilize the health center services because they are uninformed, as we talked about in our first episode. However, out of those who do know about the health center services, a portion of them still don't use them because the health care and health care personnel aren't approachable to students and ex students experience barriers to access. We want to help you build self-confidence in utilizing these resources. To help us with these, we invited Dr. Elizabeth Tully to help ans answer our questions. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today, Dr. Tully. Could you introduce yourself to our audience? I'm Dr. Elizabeth Tully. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a physician who specializes in psychiatry. So I'm a psychiatrist and I work with children and adults, all ages. I'm board certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. And I recently spent six months treating college students on the campus of the University of California, Santa Barbara at their very excellent health center. I have about 30 years of experience as a psychiatrist, and I've worked in a number of settings over that time, including clinic settings like the health center, also within psychiatric hospitals, psychiatric emergency rooms, hospital emergency rooms, and in um, medical surgical um, consults in general hospitals just to name some of the areas that I've worked in. We know there are many questions that college students might have about healthcare provided by their campus health center. So here's a bit more on, the, on that. How does health confidentiality work on a college campus? Number one, everything that the student says is private. It's covered by a rule called HIPAA. So unless you ask for the information to be shared with your primary care doctor, or with somebody else, that information is between you and your doctor. What if students want access to information from their visit for their own personal medical records or to send to a different primary doctor? Now, um, the students also had access online to read their doctor's notes um, and to access the lab reports if there were uh, labs that were drawn. It can be reassuring to know exactly what is expected of you or what information to bring beforehand. What advice can you give to a student who might feel nervous or anxious about seeking help at a health center that could help them feel better prepared? Well, I think it's very important for college students to be as well organized as they can be when they come to see a physician at the student health center. For example, coming in to see a psychiatrist with a list of your current medications or medication bottles, the name of any other psychiatrist who was treating you, um, and how to get in touch with that psychiatrist. All of that is very helpful. I think some sort of timeline is also very helpful. When did you first have a diagnosis? What type of treatment was tried? How successful was it? What happened? Maybe not necessarily in a lot of detail, but just giving us an idea of what worked and for how long it worked and what the dose was. And during that time, were there other changes? Even if you're not utilizing health center resources for mental health, here are a few steps you should follow to feel prepared. What would you say is most important for students to keep in mind? The next step is, of course, um, trying to define what the problem is. And there's probably no easy way to do this. People usually feel um, a little awkward, a little uncertain. Um, so just tell the truth. Tell us what you're going through. Give us some examples. Tell us what you've tried. Tell us what hasn't worked. 
Um, tell us what you think is causing the problem. Tell us how long you think the problem has been going on. And tell us what it is about that problem that bothers you the most. What do you wish you had help with first and foremost? As college students, we know that finances are always a worry and play a big factor in our decisions. And what can you say regarding financial topics such as students concerned about health insurance? Of course, with students, always, there are going to be practical considerations just like there are with other, with other patients. But because students are so young and it may be the first time that they've navigated the healthcare system completely on their own, um, we, know, we know that and we, uh, we will help the student. So if we don't have the answer, for example, if we don't understand what medications are covered by the insurance, there are administrative people at the health science at the at the health center that we can ask, um, whose job it is to try to figure this out, and who uh, who usually have quite a bit of experience with that. And what about fee waivers? Absolutely. Um, usually, the physicians aren't involved directly. With that, the que that question needs to go to the administrative uh, staff. Um, so my advice would be, if you are worried about money, if you don't feel that um, you're going to be able to, to pay for it, just take the time out of your day to either walk into the Student Health Center and ask questions or, or, or call. But I happen to be a big fan of in-person. I think when you when you walk in and you sit in the waiting room and you make that that contact um, with the staff, I think it's it's worth a lot that you you actually took the time to go over there and meet them and talk with them. You may come out um, with a much better understanding of how this center works, and you may end up feeling a lot better about all the financial and technical aspects of it. Most of all, it's important to remember that the personnel and campus health centers are here for us. It's their job to help us and they want to help us. We've all been students. We know what it's like. In fact, most of us have been students for a very long time. So we're very eager to help the students. And we want to help them as quickly as possible because the clock is ticking. You're in college, it's expensive. Those exams are coming along. So let's work together to try to come up with the best solution as quickly and efficiently as possible at the least amount of cost and disruption to you as a student. As college students, we can be extremely busy at times. Is telehealth an option or some form of online appointments? It was whatever the student wanted. If the student said, I prefer a Zoom meeting, it would be arranged. Um, so yes, I, I saw a number of students by, by Zoom who were in their, in their dorm rooms, in their apartment rooms, sitting in a car, sometimes sitting outside. Um, it was really effortless. It worked really well for them, saved them time. And almost always the quality was pretty good. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Tillard. We appreciate you joining us on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. For more information about how to schedule a telehealth appointment and a walkthrough, visit the link in the description. Remember, you pay for these services as a part of your tuition, so you might as well use them. Yeah.